Hello, and welcome to another lesson today on acoustic treatment. If you have done some research about how to acoustically treat your home recording studio, then you've probably come across some trouble when it comes to the low end absorption in your room. Now we may have heard about things like room modes and those contribute to the problems in our low end. In this video, we're gonna talk about one solution of there's several, but this one I'm gonna focus on diaphragmatic panel absorbers. Now these are fairly easy to build. They require some basic math uh, to figure out how to get the panel depth, but I'm gonna teach you exactly what they are, how to build them, and how you can use them to help fix low frequency problems in your home recording studio. Before we jump in, I wanna give you a free gift. This is my acoustic treatment guide. So this goes over exactly where to place all the acoustic panels in your home recording studio so that it will sound awesome and you'll be able to have mixes that translate and you'll be able to mix and master and record with ease in your home recording studio room. To download that, just go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic. All right, let's jump into this lesson on how to fix those low frequency problems in your room. So first, what is a diaphragmatic bass absorber or bass trap? So to start out with, I usually divide up my high frequency absorption with what are called velocity traps. And this is 125 Hertz and above that can be mostly absorbed using carefully placed panels that are basically just insulation with an air gap behind them and some cloth covering over them placed strategically around your room. And that'll do wonders. And I recommend that everyone do this first before you jump into the craziness that is pressure traps, which is what these diaphragmatic traps fall into. So once you've completely treated your room uh, with your insulation traps, your velocity based traps, then you can do a room EQ analysis using something like room EQ wizard and figure out what are the problem frequencies in your low end that you still need to address. So with that said, once you're ready for the pressure traps, the diaphragmatic panel trap uses a simple uh, physical idea, which is to create a mass spring effect where you have an enclosed box, the low frequency base wave hits the, hits the front of the box. It has a wood panel or it could be a limp membrane panel that is on the outside of the box. It vibrates and the spring behind it also helps to absorb the, the low frequencies. So the friction involved will turn that low frequency into heat. Now these panel absorbers are not super efficient, whereas our velocity-based panels with insulation can have a, a absorption coefficient of one, meaning 100% absorption. These panel absorbers usually max out around 0.3. So you need more of them to do the same amount of attenuation that a velocity trap would do. Hence why I said earlier, start with velocity, end with the pressure traps. Now there is a specific formula that we're going to use. This is some, some math, so don't get too afraid because I'm going to kind of go through the process, but the formula is frequency equals 170 divided by the square root of the mass of your front panel times the depth of the box you're going to build. Now in imperial units, that is going to be in inches for the depth and then the mass is going to be in pounds per square foot. If you want to switch that to metric, instead of 170, use 60 as the numerator in that uh, division problem. Now, you can add glass fiber inside of this box, just making sure that it doesn't touch the front panel, which needs to vibrate freely, and that will increase the absorption of your box, and it will also increase the Q, so the the distance of the frequency that you want to absorb. So usually with these panels, I uh, recommend adding uh, usually like a Corning 703 two inch uh, fiberglass bat against the back of the panel, uh, just making sure that it doesn't fall forward and we'll talk more about that later. You want to place these boxes in the pressure maxima of the base frequency you're trying to, to treat. Now this is probably like, oh my God, pressure maxima, what is he talking about? But basically these low base frequencies have huge waveforms and when they're bouncing around in your room, the room modes, so to speak, is gonna create areas where you're gonna really hear a ton of that base frequency build up and areas where there'll be a null or a pressure minimum where you really don't hear the base frequency at all. So if we place our, our uh, 
base traps, these panel traps in an area where there's a dip in the base frequency, it won't work. So we wanna make sure that we place them in areas that have high pressure maxima. And I'll talk more about that later in this video. Lastly, we wanna build these traps so that they have a surface area of five square feet or more. Like I said before, they're not super efficient at absorption, so we need more surface area to try to absorb the base in the room. So the next question we have before building these boxes is which frequencies are we going to try to pinpoint and treat in our room? So assuming you've already done all the velocity traps, the insulation and cloth traps you can, and you're ready to treat these low frequencies, first what you need to do is get a software like Room EQ Wizard and a measurement microphone. Uh, I have a measurement microphone that I use for Sonarworks, which works great. Or you can buy a measurement specific microphone um, that will be able to capture the full frequency spectrum of your room. Now I'm gonna show for the rest of this video, I'm gonna use an example from my own home studio to show you exactly what we're gonna to do to try to treat these low frequencies. So here is a screenshot from my Room EQ Wizard. This is the last time I did a measurement in my room and we can see that I have some issues. I like to look at the spectrogram here because this shows the ringing out of those modal frequencies. So when I'm mixing and, and listening to recorded music, those low frequencies that look like little flames in the diagram are actually going to ring out and decay longer than other frequencies around it, which is going to cause this effect of making the bass harder to hear, kind of muddy. And uh, so it's something that eventually, you know, I would like to fix in this room. And the one of the ways I can do that is by building these diaphragmatic panel traps and placing them in certain places around my room to try to absorb those frequencies. And so those frequencies that you're seeing on the spectrogram right here are 106 hertz, 83 hertz, 55 hertz, and 30 hertz. So I would want to build differing depths of panel traps on in this case, I would probably put them on my back wall or I could put them on my front wall, which we'll talk about in a second. And these traps would help to absorb the pressure maxima at those frequencies. So with all that said, let's look at where in the world I would place these panels and how I came to the conclusion that I would use my front and my back wall. So a really helpful tool for all of this is AMROC, which is A-M-R-O-C dot com. I use it all the time with my clients and when I'm designing studios, and it's really a useful tool. In this case, it really works on square, uh, rectangular rooms. So if you have an oddly shaped room, you're gonna not get the most accurate results. My room is in fact oddly shaped because many of you know I have a peaked ceiling. Um, but what's interesting about a peaked ceiling is that we can actually get a fairly accurate idea as if we're sitting center in the listening position in our studio, that highest ceiling height right above you is where the frequencies are gonna interact uh, with that ceiling height. So in my studio, it's about 11 feet, and then I've got a 20 foot length and about a 13.8 foot width. So with that said, I can actually see the modal responses in my room and they match up pretty, pretty closely here. I can see that the 106 Hertz is uh, actually a oblique and tangential mode that, that are close together there that's causing some issues. And I can see lower down in the frequency spectrum as well where those modes are. And then on AMROC, I can see with their little room diagram calculator there, that there's like a red and a blue area of pressure maxima that shows which walls these modal problems are happening on. And that's where you can place your uh, acoustic treatment or your panel absorber. Now it's important to double check this so you can actually click on the little lines on AMROC and it will play that bass tone, which I think is really awesome. I didn't realize that. And so you can walk around your room as it's playing that bass sine wave and listen. And usually on the back wall, you can really hear a buildup of bass. And in the corners, you're definitely going to hear a buildup of bass as well. All right. Now that we figured out where to place the box, let's actually calculate how much depth we need in that box. Because remember, we're going to need to calculate what type of panel we want on the front and the weight of it, and then we're going to need to calculate the depth of that panel to figure out how that math works out. So in this example, I'm uh, going to use 19 by 30 seconds inch sheathing um, to build on the front of my panel. The reason is that this actually comes in at two pounds per square foot, which is fairly heavy. And I also looked on Go on uh, Home Depot here in the US and it's fairly readily available. You could use a nicer wood if you wanted to. And the thicker the wood you, you use, the thinner the panel absorber you're gonna have to build. So I, I lean towards trying to get heavier wood on the front of that panel um, because it will help with making the box slimmer so you don't use a lot of your floor space in your studio. 
Now, if we look at that formula here, we're gonna need to solve, so do a little bit of algebra here, we're gonna need to solve for the depth. So we know that our frequency is gonna be 106 hertz, and that's gonna equal 170 over the square root of the mass, which we know is two pounds in this situation, times depth. So we need to figure out what the depth is. So I did a little bit of algebra here in the background, and I'll let you know that the answer is 1.28 inches, or if you want to turn that into fractions, that's one inch and nine thirty seconds. So really a very thin box. This is something that you could throw on the back wall, no problem. In this case, because it's so thin, I probably would forego having any insulation in there because it's just such a small airspace. The other option is that we could actually th uh, reduce the weight of our front panel to get it just a little bit bigger. Um, so you could throw some insulation in the back of that panel box as well. Now I will say when you do this, it's smart to weigh the material that you're buying as your panel on the front, just to double check its weight. Um, what I'm looking at are just the, the nominal weights that are online, um, but every panel, every material is gonna have a different weight. Another thing I'll say is that MLV, mass loaded vinyl, uh, could be a great membrane for the front of your, your uh, panel. You could use two pound MLV or one pound MLV if you're doing like 106 Hertz in this case. and that creates a limp membrane, which limp membranes, uh, rather than like a rigid wood membrane, is actually going to increase the absorption. So I didn't use MLV in this situation because it's kind of harder to, to source and it's a little more expensive, but if you have the budget, if you can find a sheet of MLV, definitely I would go for that as well because that might give you better results in the long run with your diaphragmatic absorber. All right, now we're getting to the final part of this, this lesson here where I wanna teach you how to actually build one of these. And so I've actually diagrammed up a panel absorber. I made this one at 60 hertz uh, just to show you the depth with the same example so you can see how the insulation fits in there. But you can change this di diagram as much as you want. I'm just showing you the general construction plans and you can change the dimensions however you need. So if you look at this diagram here, we can see that I'm gonna build the panel sides out of MDF. Uh, any wood would work. Uh, MDF is just, again, kind of on the cheaper side and readily available here at Home Depot. And so my bottom sides and top will all be made out of MDF. And then I'd put in a one by and a half inch wood stop on the front of the panel just to have something to screw in that sheathing on the bottom and the top. So I put two of those wood stops on the bottom and the top there. And then I actually put the wood stops towards the back, leaving a two inch gap for the insulation panel to just sit that rigid insulation, Corning 703 or Knopf insulation is great, or you can even use rock wool rigid bat insulation. All three of those would work really well. And you can just push it against the back of the panel, just making sure that I put in those wood stops so that the insulation wouldn't fall forward and potentially touch the front of our resonating panel that we want to resonate freely and not be dampened by the insulation. Lastly, when you're building this box, you wanna make sure that on the inside, you acoustically seal all the seams. The goal is to make sure that this box is airtight. If there's any air leaks whatsoever, it's gonna decrease its efficiency. And then after you finish the box, you need to test it. So to test it, what we can do is play a, in this case, it would be a 60 Hertz sine wave through our speakers. And we can feel on the top of the front of the box if that uh, sheathing is vibrating or if you used mass loaded vinyl, do you feel it, feel it resonating? And if it is, you can find the center frequency by increasing the sine wave up in frequency or down in frequency and find where that peak vibration is of the material. And that's gonna be the center frequency of your panel trap. Like I said, you know, this is a, a scientific approach to, des to designing an acoustic panel, and it's not perfect because we're dealing with the real world of materials. You know, our physics theory works, but in practice in the real world, we're going to have to design, test, design, test. So if you build a panel and it's not quite at the center frequency you wanted, you might have to adjust the next panel to, uh, to make it a little bit better. So some people opt to buy uh, pre-built panels from manufacturers that they know will hit like 40 hertz, 60 hertz, 80 hertz, or 100 hertz, and then you can guarantee that you know that that center frequency of that diaphragmatic trap will actually work at that frequency. So in conclusion, 
I hope this has been helpful with giving you an idea of what a diaphragmatic panel is, understanding the difference between velocity and pressure traps, understanding how you could potentially treat some of the low frequencies in your room, and learning that you need to test your room first before just randomly throwing acoustic treatment at it because you need to know which frequencies you're actually trying to absorb. All right, I hope this was helpful. Uh, again, if you guys are going down this road of acoustically treating your home studio, check out my free acoustic guide. You can download that at soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash acoustic.